At this stage, the Christy Gnome thing is beyond parody. It really is, because you have a senior politician uh, turning up to do live TV interviews and well, just listen to what she had to say and then tell me by pressing the like button, yes, is it time for her to go? Should she quit politics? Yes or no? person. Um, let's talk first. We want to talk about a lot of sure. the topics that you address in the book, but yeah. the book is called No Going Back, but mm -hmm. it sounds like the publisher, Center Street, is going back on a couple of the details in the book. Oh, I don't believe so. Specifically, when you write in the book, I remember when I met with North, North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. I'm sure he underestimated me. That, as I understand, is now being removed from the book at your request. Yes, when correct? I became aware of that, we changed the content and uh, the future editions will be adjusted. And uh, you know, I appreciate that. I've met with many, many world leaders. I've traveled around the world. Uh, I should not have put that anecdote in the book. And uh, at my request, they have that removed specific it. How, meeting didn't happen. How, uh, I'm saying that I'm not talking about that meeting. I'm not talking about my meetings with world leaders. But you uh, there's do some talk that about are in meetings the book. with world leaders. There's some that are in the book, and then there's some that's not in the book. Many but why of them are there actually two specific in... mentions of meeting Kim Jong Un and talking about him? And a specific memory. I'm sure he underestimated me, having no clue about my experience staring down little tyrants. Did you tell your ghostwriter to you write know, that? I'm, I've specifically have worked on policy for over 30 years. And over that time, I have traveled around the world and I have met with leaders around the world. Uh, and, and that anecdote, I've asked them to change the content and and it will be removed. It's a simple question. Did you or did you not? That's, meet with that's, that's the answer that I have for you is that I'm it will be adjusted. And as soon as I became aware of it, that content. Talk about meeting some world leaders and one specific one. Quote, I remember when I met with North Korean dictator Kim Jong Un, I'm sure he underestimated me, having no clue about my experience staring down little tyrants. I've been a children's pastor after all. Did you meet Kim Jong-un? Well, you know, as soon as this was brought to my attention, um, I certainly uh, made some changes and looked at uh, this, this passage. And I've met with many, many world leaders. Uh, I've traveled around the world. Uh, as soon as it was brought to my attention, uh, we went forward and have made some edits. So I'm glad that this book is being released in a couple of days and that those edits will be in place and that people will, will have the updated version. So you did not meet with Kim Jong-un. That's what you're saying. You know, I've met with many, many world leaders, many world leaders. I've traveled around the world. I think I've talked extensively in this book about my time serving in Congress, my time as governor, before governor, some of the travels that I've had. Um, I'm not going to talk about my specific meetings with world leaders. I'm just not going to do that. Uh, this anecdote shouldn't have been in the book. And as soon as it was brought to my attention, uh, I made sure that that was adjusted. So, so you did not meet with Kim Jong-un. That's what you're saying. You know, I've met with many, many world leaders, many world leaders. I've traveled around the world. I think I've talked extensively in this book about my time serving in Congress, my time as governor, before governor, some of the travels that I've had. Um, I'm not going to talk about my specific meetings with world leaders. I'm just not going to do that. Uh, this anecdote shouldn't have been in the book. And as soon as it was brought to my attention, uh, I made sure that that was adjusted. So well, uh, the book is not released until Tuesday. And so yeah. we're doing all that we can to make sure that those changes are made and I'm going to continue to focus on what this book is and the blueprint that it lays out for the American citizen on all of the the things in the background and and stories of my life but also uh, what I think that needs to be identified in politics and what's broken today I talk about how broken the money yeah. game is how broken it is that that we've got consultants that are getting rich off of elected officials and then how fake some elected politicians are sure. every single person in this country wants someone in elected office that's that's um, a human being that doesn't say they're perfect. Uh, I take responsibility for that being in the book. And as soon as it was brought to my attention, uh, I asked for it to be changed. So I'm glad that the release date is in a couple of days and we're excited to talk to America about uh, my new book, No Going Back. So, I mean, Chris, these are horrible people. They, they're, they're just awful. Their nihilism and their bloodlust is pathological at this point because really the cruelty is the point in MAGA. Right?
And this is a perfect example of that. I mean, Christy Noem can make any excuse she wants. She can try and walk it back all she wants or blame it on the fake news media all she wants or blame it on her ghostwriter or the editors or the publishers. But no, she made the choice to put this in her book, a book that she has already audio voice. There's an audio version of it. So she was well aware of what was all in it. And she just made the decision to brag about being a puppy executioner. It's sadistic. And she's out here trying to be a political clout chaser, basically trying to curry favor with Donald Trump in some weird, sadistic way because he's a horrible, indecent person. So she's bragging about a hor- being a horrible, indecent person who will do the hard things by shooting her puppy in a gravel pit. I, this is just a perfect example of MAGA. And frankly, I hope that MAGA's ilk is thrown into the gravel pit of history after November uh, November this year, because that's where it belongs. It's sickening. But I also think it's a case study in where my former political party is. Look, I served with Christy Noem. Uh, she wasn't this way eight, nine, 10 years ago. Every one of my former Republican colleagues, Jessica, has learned to be like Trump, to be cruel, uh, to lie, to never uh, ever apologize, to never back down. She, she's trying to be like Trump. Uh, if I shoot my dog, if I say that Biden's dog should be shot, uh, that's a really tough, cruel thing to say. And that's what Trump says. And that's what the Republican voters want to hear. They've all, sadly, all of my former colleagues, Jessica, have learned from Trump. They've all learned to imitate Trump because Trump's gotten away with it all these years. Christy Nome is an example. When she got in the bottom of this hole, she didn't just keep digging. She ordered high-powered drilling equipment to keep digging further. This has now gone beyond parody. It's gone beyond insanity. And the fact of the matter, on Friday, you had six separate Trump sources telling Politico that the party only needs one crazy person at a time. Donald Trump will appeal to all those crazy people. But Christy Noem is going to keep pushing on this thing. But, you know, the rest of the things we're finding out in the book are just as absurd about uh, as the things about the dog. So she stared down Kim Jong-un and it never happened. Yes. You know, I, 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 I this is a woman who has gotten so caught up in her own BS and cannot stop. And she's being empowered to go on television and lie more. It's amazing to watch this absolute flaming train wreck into clown car mountain.